وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور The film you're about to see explains how a human being is created and which stages he goes through to come into existence. This film is about you. Let us now take a brief trip in time and go back to the past. Let us study an extraordinary story, one full of miracles. Let us see what a human being once was. A single cell in the mother's womb. A helpless thing in need of protection. Smaller than a grain of salt. You too once consisted of this single cell. Just like everybody else in the world. And then this cell divided, becoming two cells. Then they divided and became four, then eight and then sixteen cells. The cells continued dividing. First a piece of flesh emerged. Then this piece of flesh took shape. It developed arms, legs, eyes. It grew one hundred billion times larger than the initial cell and six billion times heavier. God performed a string of miracles and created the human being you are watching in this film, who was once just a drop of water. He revealed to man how he created him in the Quran in these words. Does a man think that he will be left uncontrolled, without purpose? Was he not once a drop of ejected semen? Then he became a clot. So he created and fashioned him and made him into two sexes, male and female. Is he who does this not able to bring the dead to life? Wrapped up in our daily lives, we are most of the time unaware of the one most important miracle taking place before our very eyes.
This miracle is the miracle of creation in human beings. The first miracle of creation begins in a woman's body, in the organ called the ovary, with the maturing of a single egg cell. There is a long journey ahead of this maturing egg. It will first enter the organ known as the fallopian tube, then travel through this for a long distance and finally reach the mother's womb. Shortly before the mature egg is released from the ovary, the fallopian tube gets ready to catch it. With sensitive movements, it tries to locate this egg cell on top of the ovary. As a result of this search, the fallopian tube finds the maturing egg and pulls it into itself. And the egg's journey has begun at last. The egg is obliged to travel the whole of the fallopian tube. But it has no organelles to help it to do this. No fins or feet, for instance. For this reason, a special system has been created for the egg's journey. Billions of cells on the inner surface of the fallopian tube have been charged with ensuring the egg reaches the womb. These cells position the tiny hairs on their surface called cilia, so that they lie in the direction of the womb. In this way, they send the egg cell in the correct direction, as if passing a very valuable item from one hand to the next. Consider this for a moment. These tiny hairs are part of a highly intelligent plan and have been situated just where they need to be in just the shape they need to be. All of them together, they perform a carrying motion in a unified direction. If one part of these cells did not carry out their function, or if they performed their function in different directions, the egg would not reach its target and birth could not take place. God's creation, however, is flawless, and every cell carries out the task assigned to it without error. In this way, the egg cell progresses straight to the place which is being specially prepared for it, in other words, the mother's womb. But the egg cell being so carefully carried has a lifespan of only 24 hours. If it is not fertilized within this time, it will die. It needs a vital material in order to be fertilized. The sperm, which will come from the male body. A sperm is in fact a cell, the function of which is to convey the genetic data of the male to the egg cell in the woman's body. When it is examined closely, sperm looks just like a machine specially designed to carry this load. The front of the sperm is covered with armor. There is another layer of armor under the first, and under this second layer lies the cargo carried by the sperm. In this cargo are 23 chromosomes belonging to the male. All the information concerning the human body, right down to the finest detail, is carried inside the chromosomes. In order for a new human being to emerge, the 23 chromosomes in the sperm have to unite with the 23 chromosomes inside the mother's egg cell. In this way, the first foundations of a person's 46 chromosomes will be laid. The armor system at the head of the sperm 
will protect this valuable cargo from all danger right through its journey. But the design in sperm is not limited to this. There is a very powerful engine in the middle of the sperm. The end of the engine is connected to the tail of the sperm. The power produced by the engine turns the tail like a propeller and enables the sperm to move swiftly. Since there is an engine in the middle, it will need fuel to make it work. This need has been thought of and the most productive fuel for the